live right now, third phase moon, taking calls from around the world. That's why we're kind of sounding kind of funny tonight. I'm not sure if we're coming in clear enough for the radio show. I, I'm hoping we're clear. We're wanting to get, okay, good. We we have a confirmation. We're good to go. We're live on air. Wow. Okay, the number to call in is 347-934-0378. Get the word out that UFOs are real, and we're not alone, people. So that's what we got to get. We got to get down to the bottom of that real fast because... Wow, the the caller lines are lighting up. People are wanting to share their story. So you know what? Let's just get to that right now. Let's go to a caller that's been holding on for quite a while now. Let's go to area code 347. You're live, third phase. Welcome to the show. 347, you there? Going once, going twice, got to go. Go to area code Seven zero two. I know we just put out some incredible video on Third Phase of Moon uh, the past couple days from uh, Jack. Jack is back with incredible video. We'll be sharing that video as you're watching and listening live to the people. Eric Code 702, you, you there? Yeah, it's me. How you doing? Hey, doing good. Is this a Chalice? Yep, it's Chalice. All right, Chalice, hey, welcome back. You know, um, I want you to stand by because I, I, I want to ask yeah, you a I few understand. questions. But I'm going to be getting, uh, you know, Jack just submitted these videos. Let's get Chalice in real quick. Did you see uh, Jack's footage that was just released, uh, I think, within 24 hours? I really did. I liked it. I think that it shows a really great point that everybody has to realize that there's like a beacon, there's a ship. They all have to meet into one. It's pretty cool. Nice. Nice. Chalice, stand by. uh, Jack, you there? Jack's calling from his ranch. I know. Hello? I want you. Hello. Jack, Jack, it's Blake Cousins. Welcome to the show. Hi, Thanks for calling in. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with you all tonight. You know, people are saying that your videos are quite amazing, and then some people are on the fence that, you know, what you're sharing to Third Phase of Moon is is not the real deal. What What do you got to say to people about that? Well... I understand that a lot of people may have questions regarding what they see on these videos, but I myself was there, and I captured these videos. So I, myself, I know that there is something very peculiar going on up there. Now, what it is, I cannot tell you myself either. And so that's precisely why I have seen these videos, is because I want to, have some understanding of what this phenomenon might be. Well, that's what uh, we all want to know, uh, Jack. And basically, this event that happened just yesterday, you've been submitting a couple of videos over the past six, seven months now. And i, I got to say they're quite amazing. But in regards to this event that happened to you the other night, we uh, uploaded that part it took us a while to get in all the information that you're submitting, but this thing like had a triangular formation. Then it kind of split off into four different objects. Was this a kind of a one piece? Uh, were they multiple ships? Was it one ship? What do you? What, what was your take on that? Well, it was definitely multiple um, vehicles in the air there. Now, how they managed to to gather all into one, again, I cannot explain. The way it looked as though they, they joined into one singular ship and then uh, separated into these multiple pieces. Now, after it separated, those individual objects, they were very, very discernible on the video. You can see that there are multiple objects there. I do not know, once again, what that was. 
perhaps it's uh, it's related to this this uh, military activities that's going on in the area. Wow, let's uh, let's stick it to that military activities. That's kind of new information. I want to get to that with Jack and more callers are lining up. We're going to get to the public and around the world in regards to this UFO phenomenon. Everybody, stand by. This is Blake Cousins, Third Phase Moon. We'll be right back. Lining up, and we want to get to them all. And I'm trying to see if Jack's here, and Jack's gone. Hold on, hold on. We got Jack back. Jack, you there? Thanks for waiting. Hello, Jack. Uh oh. We're gonna try Jack again. Jack, you there? Jack just dropped out. Okay, we're going to try and get Jack back. We're having some difficulties. I don't know what's going on with the switchboard. Maybe too many callers calling in at the same time. Let's go to area code 304. You're live. You're into Hi. third phase moon. Hi there. Your name? Um, Christian Strait. What's up, Christian? Where are you calling from? Um, West Virginia. Hey, thanks for calling into third phase moon. You got a UFO sighting you want to share it tonight? Um, yeah, actually, um, if you would search my name on YouTube, Christian Strait, um, I actually have two videos, um, uploaded, but, um, Flip. I've had many sightings for years, I've just never had the technology or, my, I, I'm just recorded it on an average Galaxy X, X5 or whatever, and, but I've what had many shoot? sightings. What do you shoot there? What does it look um, like? Oh. It's just Christian. a pure white orb. It's just a ball of energy. There's no sound. 
I've showed them to many friends, and uh, what do they some think? people think uh, some say drones, but they just don't want to think something weird, so they assume it's something government. And, yeah, and I've had many I think that believers come to my house and actually witness things. Like I just live in a dark valley, and there's no light pollution where I live, so that always uh, comes in uh-huh. handy. Hey, so um, so these videos, were they shot during the daytime or nighttime? And can you say your YouTube channel once more so we could share this with the world and people um, search you? Just search Christian Straight. You Christian scroll Strait. down and I have a page on there. It's It'd be like a account or whatever. It's it's right. on the it's probably 15 things down. But, um, yeah, they're at night and they're just uh, pure white balls of energy. That's pretty much every sighting I've had is that, like, and that's why I've, be, I've become so easy at noticing them. Like, if you, it's kind of when you notice an ant on the ground, you have to stay out of focus to witness it. You know, if you're staring straight at it, you're not going to, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Sometimes getting these guys on video is a bit tricky, too, as well, to what you're seeing with the, your Naked and I've eye compared to noticed, like, um, okay. I've had sightings yep. when um, things are moving, and they whatever it is, they they know when people are recording because I've recorded probably something you know twenty thirty minutes after I've caught it moving, and it won't move. And then as soon as I turn my phone off, it starts moving again. And then I'll turn it right back on, and it, it's almost as if it knows like what you're doing. Oh. Or, yeah, they know Christian. They know what's going on. And I appreciate you sharing your videos. We're going to check it out after the show. If anybody wants to send me that link during the flash chat, uh, flip it for you by all means. Check out Christian Straight's channel. And uh, we're going to get to other callers. Thanks, Christian, for calling in. Uh, we're going to bring him Jack back real fast. Jack, Jack is being visited by unknown objects. I'm not sure what it is. I know over the past uh, eight months or so, his couple of videos are unidentified beyond belief. I can't even imagine what they are. Angelic beings, a military. What kind of military action is going over there, Jack? Yes, sir. You know, I do believe that these things are military-related. Now, I cannot say that they are entirely military. However, there is a base located very near where my ranch is located. And so I assume, especially seeing all of these transport aircraft and so forth, and when there are events, many times there are recognizable vehicles in the air as well. And so I presume that there are military maneuvers taking place nearby, but some of well, these was, occurrences are beyond me. Yeah, that, that's what I was about to say. In that video that you captured the other night, it seemed that there were definitely military flying helicopters. I'm not sure what kind they were, Apache, what have you, but they definitely were interested in that UFO, it seemed like, in the video. I would say so. And when the uh, when the object dissipated, the military aircraft also turned and went back in their respective directions. They also left. And so I can surely say that that object was no longer there because the other aircraft in the area at that time, so... The way that that object disappeared was absolutely unexplainable, and uh, that's why I, I I'm calling in here for answers. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite interesting. Let me ask you, how big is this ranch? What are you guys What are you guys farming? Is it agriculture? Is it Is it what kind of ranch is it? Well, most of my yeah. neighbors are ranching cattle. Uh, at my ranch, we have uh, a few hundred head of cattle, and we also have horses. 
but uh, for the most part, around most people are, are into cattle ranching in the area. Gotcha. Before I get to callers from uh, around the world, I, I got to get to them, Jack. But it seemed like during the video, it's, it seems like the ranchers were coming in on from the other end on ATV vehicles. It seemed to me you weren't alone in this eyewitness testimony. No, I was not. And this is not the first time that other people in the area have also captured video. And we have spoken. I spoke to one of my neighbors last night, and he claims that he also has some video, which I have not seen yet. Video? But More videos? Yes, uh, he says that wow. he has. And so uh, I expect that that he will be sharing that perhaps with you. I hope to see it very soon myself. But I, I, I just want to have some more evidence to corroborate what I have seen. And I'm very glad to know that I am not the only one that has witnessed these very strange occurrences in the area. Well, if anybody wants to see Jack's video right now, go to YouTube. Punch in. Wow. Farm Rancher Captures Spectacular UFO Video. UFO Sightings 2016. You'll see some of his incredible evidence that he just submitted. And uh, and there's more to come. He's it's actually two videos we posted up on Third Phase of Moon featuring his incredible uh, testimony. What's going on there tonight? Are you still on the lookout? I am. I am at home. And uh, it's fairly quiet out there this evening. I uh, haven't noticed any irregular activity tonight. But I will uh, I will be keeping my eyes on the skies, as you folks say. And if I see anything further, I'll be sure to let you know. Well, that was uh, Jack calling from his ranch, undisclosed. But he, whatever's going on over there, it's something that I can't explain. And Jack's still, I'm sure, quite puzzled. Jack, you stay in touch to Third Phase Moon and... Uh, Thanks for calling in tonight. Well, thank you, Blake, and I most certainly will. All right, Jack, stay safe. And uh, that was it. That's Jack, everybody, updating us on what's going on on the ranch. And that was quite informative. More information live on Third Phase of Moon Radio. This is, uh, this is quite exciting. It doesn't get much better than this. And I love talking about UFOs. And the public chimes in. Everybody, stay tuned. This is... Third Phase of Moon. We'll be right back.
unidentified flying objects captured from around the world. That's what they do. That's what they do. People film them, and they submit it to third phase of the moon. And that's, that's quite incredible. And we're, we're doing this from an undisclosed location, so the sound might be a little funny. We're, we're opening up with our new studio here next week, Friday. So don't worry about that. We're going to be back on live strong. But i got to say, there's a lot of callers, lots of callers. And, man, we got to get to it. we got to get to it r- real fast. And I'm going to go to area code 541. Thanks for calling in. You there? Hi, yeah. Okay, can you turn down your uh, background sound and uh, tell us your name? Where are you calling from? Um, My name is uh, Deli. I am calling from Oregon. Hey, Deli, welcome to the show. You got a UFO sighting you want to share? Um, well, I guess a little beyond that. Uh, sure. I actually sent you guys uh, an email with some links for videos and uh, photos. Um, I've always had, like, some experiences, but lately things have been getting, like, really, really bad. Like, I'll go really? to sleep and I'll wake up with a completely dislocated ankle. I have to go to the emergency room. Um, so <laughs> we have uh, cameras all over in our house um, watching, and uh, we caught some pretty crazy footage Um Almost looks like somebody was like wearing an invisible cloak and walking around or something all over in the living room, and uh, <clears throat> you could hear sounds. And then, like when I wake up that morning, I have like really weird markings on the palms of my hands and the back of my hands and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> well, I know you people might think that laughter that you just did right after explaining this shocking these shocking accounts is oh this girl's she's kidding or she's lying because it sh- nobody would laugh about this but that's a perfect reaction of truth right there that you are experiencing I, this stuff oh yeah absolutely i i that's how i <laughs> that's how i express like i guess um I don't know, what would you say, nervousness? I have a, a, con, um, a condition. Uh, it's a uh, <clears throat> um, congenital disorder, and uh, it affects all the uh, connective tissues in my body. So I have been, you know, in the medical spotlight and stuff before, and I always, that's, I always try to stay lighthearted. So <laughs> that's why I always... You know, that's the thing you could do. Laughter is. Laugh. <laughs> Let me uh, ask you this, and and this could be a little personal, and you don't have to uh, give me uh, your answer. But my question is, is after these medical uh, doctors kind of look at your ankle, and you're explaining to them you have no knowledge of on how this happened, do you bring up any kind of uh, paranormal or? Alien? Absolutely not. No way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would agree with that. But what did, what are they asking you? And it must be kind of tricky for you to kind of go through hoops on giving them the answer that they're looking for. Well, at this point, uh, because I've been going through this my whole life, um, like waking up with dislocated jaws and stuff like that, um, and uh my because of the disorder that I have, um, I'm extremely flexible. So you know, like anybody you see that's like a contortionist, and they're extremely flexible. Um, well, I'm like that naturally, and so my joints dislocate very easily. My uh, disorder is called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and uh, I've. Uh, had spinal surgeries and stuff like that and you know my my doctors are used to me having problems um you know i i can't work anymore as of past few years i uh, so my condition has gotten worse it caused um a lot of damage in my neck and stuff and uh, so they're used to that but I have really weird uh, aspects about it. Like my skin is extremely stretchy. Uh, my I, I'm basically like Gumby. <laughs> and so uh, the thing is, it's it's supposed it, it's a hereditary disorder, and it runs true to the family. But 
me for some reason. I'm the only one in my family's entire history to experience this. Um, my family has actually been very athletic, totally different. Yeah, I could understand this. Let me. Um, this was, must have been a big jump for you to start to put surveillance cameras throughout your house to find out what's going on. This must have been kind of a big step. Uh, how did that proceed? What made you say we, we got to start surveillancing my, ourselves? <laughs> well, um, it, I've always had you know strange stuff happen since I was a kid, like. Uh, well, I'll tell you this, like, uh, I was in elementary school, and we lived in this really old house on this big old ranch, and uh, it, what, one night, um, we had people there, like, my, my mom, my my brother, and we each had a friend there, and all of a sudden, we our house started shaking, and we heard this loud humming that sounded like it was coming from, like, far away in the sky, and we were... Sh- sure that a jet was going to land in our backyard or on our house we weren't sure and so we all ran to the window and it got so loud it just um continually gotten louder and louder like it was getting closer and closer and we were like preparing for it to crash and uh we were looking out the window our whole house was shaking the chandeliers everything was shaking so bad and then um it sounded like it stopped like the humming stopped and it was hovering over our house and we were screaming at each other, couldn't hear each other. That's how loud it was. Um, and then all of a sudden, boom, and it was gone. There was no, like, it didn't progressively leave or anything like that. So we even called our neighbors that were like, right next door. They didn't hear a single thing. And this thing was so loud that all of us inside the house was shaked, like we couldn't even hear each other. And, uh, you know, the neighbors thought we were crazy, and <laughs> we've had all kinds of weird stuff like that happen. So, you know, progressing up through my life until uh, this point, see, it was always things like, you know, you think like, I keep shutting this door and it keeps opening, or I keep whenever I walk by this uh, white area like a bulb will bur- burst or something, you know. And uh, so everybody naturally goes, oh, ghosts, you know, (laughs) spirits. But I'm like, I really doubt a ghost is going to be leaving um, perfectly symmetrical uh, suction type of marks on my body, my hands, um, cuts, uh, uh, bruises, um, like perfectly um, symmetrical bruises. Would you mind um, me bringing on... Chalice, uh, she's her father worked in Area 51. She's been mm-hmm. abducted. She's been she has a lot of insight, and I, I wanted to know if uh, Chalice could maybe. Are you afraid of the uh, what's going on? It sounds kind of scary waking up with broken ankles and broken jaws. Are you kidding? This is Chalice. Can you help out a little bit here? Well, you know, um, the one thing that they do here when they come is they try to fix. And if it starts with the DNA, they think about the DNA and they say, okay, we've got to fix this if she's the only one with this genetic order. But the thing is, is while they're working on her, if she, you know, right in the middle of she wakes up, it could be a dislocation. It could be things like that. And our doctors at Air 51, which was Dan Burst, and a lot of them would be the ones that would fix that because they weren't trying to do it on purpose. But when they're trying to work with your DNA, and, you know, you subconsciously have to know what's really going on. And if you're just sitting there, it's going to be too hard for them to comprehend and make you understand if you're not awake and they try to work. But it's it's a lot of genetic stuff going on. And you can be healed in seconds. And I don't understand why they don't. But there's so much that people don't realize. Like, when you're standing in front of somebody, We had a cloak, we used to call it the Harry Potter cloak, but it wasn't a Harry Potter cloak. What it is is they took nanos, and they taught us that if you shave the nanos off and you put like a virus wipe over like a film of over metal, it can disappear if you program it with the computer. So I did this with my kids, and I told them I want to build my own nanos. Well, the thing about nanos is 
you can look at something right in front of you and it's programmed to be invisible, it's going to be like a mirror image and you'll do it. So we went on a bike ride the other day and I tried to explain to Bill, I said, you're seeing everything, but how close is it? If it's right in front of you, can you comprehend it? Because this is the problem with everybody at the king. They could stand next to them, but they couldn't comprehend them and see them. Their mm-hmm. mind would go crazy. And that's where you, if you could just get your mind set, and the hardest part is to see it and to live it and to feel it, at the same time, look at it. And this helicopter, this thing was above us. And I, I told Bill, I said, there's the pleadiums right there. Do you see them? He said, I see nothing. We're at the top of the hill. We're waiting for this. And, and he says, I see nothing. And I said, yeah. And I said, do something. And then the helicopter came out. It was this large helicopter sound. The wind started blowing. It was above us. Am I right, Bill? It was all over us. He goes, I still can't see nothing. There's no helicopter. There's nothing. And they made sure for 10 minutes as we sat there trying to make him comprehend, just look. And if you get past that, they can genetically fix you and you in one time. And they have such beautiful tools. And, and we're our, our technology is actually better than a lot of people realize. We're like 80 years in advance in, in our military, you know? Yeah. They do that. So when, when you know, you, that can happen to you. And this is where I even go to, like, I call them gurus, but they're healing people and they're star people. And what they do is they actually work with you. And then they tell you, look, you know, um, it's your choice. You know, it's your choice what you decide. But I, I lay in my bed and I put my hands up and I ask God to help me and he sends me my guides. These guides are always these ships that stay above you. These ships will listen to you. And if they're coming and visiting you, like you say, which is wonderful, that loud sound meant that they came through a portal just to arrive at your house. So I'm thinking, you know, wow, they're they're there for you because no one else has it. And it's very interesting to them. It's like their math. The genetic disorders is like a complication they can fix. Or maybe they, something happened and they can go back and go through it all. And then once they understand it and you understand it, it'll stop. And it's amazing stuff. And I've seen people get up and walk out being totally crippled in every way. But it's all in the mind. And if you can't stand next to it, then, you know, I, I mean, even Bill tried to stand next to a, a being. And I tried him. I said, hey, just stand there for a second. Your whole inside starts shaking. Your head starts ringing. You get freezing. And I say, control it. Control it. And that's what I try to tell most of the men. I control it. Don't panic. Don't let your, your, it's like you have the shakes on the inside, but it's all of your nerves just shaking at once. Yeah, I, I actually have a video footage of, um, like, uh, you know when you go online and, like, you were just talking about what it looks like the Harry Potter cloak, but you could see, like, a little bit of movement maybe almost like water-like or something, or the light's bending around it. And that's the footage that I caught in in my house on the cameras. Um, it's, <laughs> it's like I, I had my Christmas tree up, so I just happened to have light in the living room um, when I was in bed. And so if that light wasn't there, my cameras wouldn't have caught it. But we had it on the infrared, and it was by motion sensor, and it caught the motion. And when it turned on, you can see, I can, I can only describe it like, um, like I said, like water-like or something. And uh, it, they're moving from different angles through the living room, and then they go oh, we gotta, all the way down my hall, and they videos. make, yeah, I, I said this to you in the Okay, let's get, you know, I get a lot of emails, and that's the, you know, I try to get to every single one of them, and uh, unfortunately, I yeah. maybe have passed this one, but if you could resend them to my uh, Facebook at Third Phase of the Moon, the links are at my About page, or send it to my personal email, again, I'll share it. I want to see the video, that sounds quite amazing, and then uh, I'd definitely reach out back to you, because it sounds like this is going to be happening on a continuing basis, and I'm glad you stop by right here at Third Phase of Moon to share uh, this. And Phil, welcome to call back anytime. Keep us updated because this is a personal circle of the world that 
we're not alone, and we back each other up in this strange phenomenon and world we live in right now. So I appreciate the call in. i got to yeah. get to other callers, but looking forward to seeing okay. I, I, Gracia. Let me, I'll say one thing real quick. I, I uh, w- was, you know, trying to figure out who I wanted to talk to, and I saw a video that you did where you took a picture and you called it an angel that was above the mountain um, in the sky. And I have a picture, uh, a video, a short video, almost exactly like that, but much smaller in my house, and I called it my fairy. <laughs> but when I saw nice. that video you did, it's exactly like it. You know, I didn't do it. There's a lot of people out there that submit these things, and I kind of call it the way I see it. So I'd sure like to see uh, your video, that's for sure. And uh, okay. we thank everybody from around the world that share this. You take care. You be safe. Don't break any bones anytime soon, please, all right? <laughs> all Don't right. let anybody break your bones, whether they're from this earth or another dimension. Tell them stop it. <laughs> okay, uh, well. Okay, you take care. Well, that's a third phase of moon for you, and that was a wild ride. I mean wild, incredible stories, and I believe it. I really believe what we're hearing is going on, and it's up to you if you don't. But I do. And I think that's why the callers call in, because they know this is a place to share. Third phase of moon. Let's go to area code 804. Are you there? 804. You're live third phase. Hello? All right. We're going to go to area code. Let's try area code 205. You're live third phase. 205. you there? Hello? Hello? We're, we're broadcasting. Oh, shoot, 205, you got to get on it. You got to get on it quick. Sorry, lost you. Call back. What happened? 203. Oh, 203, you there? Hello? Hello, yeah, you're live. Welcome to the show. What's your name? Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie, welcome to Third Phase. Where are you calling from? Um, Waterbury, Connecticut. I'm just calling to say that I love the show and you guys are doing a great job. Stephanie, appreciate it. Keep your eyes on the skies, all right? Thanks. All right. Well, that's cool. Shout-outs are always cool. Let's get to area code 713. You there? Yes. Uh, hello. Good evening. Good um, evening. Welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Well, I'd like to uh, tell you a story, a true story, that occurred, I'd say, about two years ago uh, during the summertime. And um, as I was approaching, arriving home from work, I lived close to um, to Ellington Field, which is like a, I guess it's a NASA airport, and they have the uh, some fighter jets over there. But also, I live about 15 minutes from from the actual NASA Johnson Space Center. Um. What happened was <clears throat> I went out, once I got home, put on my swing trunks, went to my backyard, uh, to my pool, and um, <laughs> as I was, you know, about to, was walking into my pool, it was about, I would say about 6, 6.30 in the evening, and uh, all of a sudden, I saw this, this orange sphere, must have been about 100 yards high, just above my treetop, pine trees, just above that. The, the sphere it was the size of a small van, and uh, it was bright. But the, the most uh, partic- peculiar thing about it was when you look at it, it was um, you could actually see a smaller circle in, of that sphere, almost like a propulsion system. I mean, I could see it clearly. It was clear as day. I didn't even blink. And uh, so I saw that. And the thing turned around as if, you know, just slowing down, turned around. And immediately after that, there was a fighter jet. Okay, Uh, yeah. I guess it was an F-15, F-17. And it was flying low as well. And so immediately... 
right after the spear went over overhead and turned around, the spider jet just flew very, you know, about maybe three, four hundred feet high. And so as soon as it, the, the spear turned around towards the fighter jet, it seemed like the jet started stalling. And then just, you know, gave some thrust. I could turn right away from the craft. But um, it was strange. And uh, after, the, after that, the spear just took off. I mean, literally just disappeared, you know, in, into the sky. Nice. Uh, that's, that's <laughs> and, really awesome. And the thing is, you know, I wanted to pose this question to you. Sure. I mean, w- what it was, you know, what had happened? You know, was this part of the military or was it truly alien to where, you know, it was in NASA, in the NASA area or in, in this area here? But after the fact that this happened, there were helicopters, black helicopters, helicopters without lights, and there were searchlights. This had gone on for 45 minutes, airplanes all over. And uh, so anyway, so I just wanted to pose the question on what it could be. You know, what was the intention of this craft? Was there any relationship to, to the military or, or not? Well, you put two words together basically alien and military i think basically if you were alien visiting planet earth and you saw the technology that the military had and maybe think about maybe they had one of ours i'm sure as papa bear you'd be keeping an eye on these military guys and what they're doing so and vice versa and it is probably probably mostly exercise in my sense of what a lot of these UFOs and military sightings, when they happen together, I'm kind of coming to a theory that this is an exercise, that they are working together. This is, this is my thought. So I, that's about as best as I could give you on that, but it's hard well, telling you what's know, going after, on. After the fact that I saw that, I mean, of course, at that point I'd start online trying to gather some information on orange spheres and i i heard actually there was a orange sphere that actually um visited the, the nuclear sites that kind of thing i believe if, um, from my research back but um i mean i i'm just not it, it you know the the sphere did not make any noise at all it was totally silent okay oh yeah yeah and, <laughs> and it was close it wasn't one of these little you know one of these spheres that a lot of people see, and you can barely see it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. We don't like those hundreds. videos. If there was, I mean, I wish I video. would have had a video. Yeah, yeah, I wish I did. It, but uh, if you barely blink, you're going to miss it. Yeah, it's hard to catch, or catch those. That's no doubt. I like <laughs> when they just basically do what the, you're, what you just explained. If you're shooting a spherical object, send me the best part of the video in the beginning to get my interest because there's a lot of videos that people say, I shot this UFO and it's a, it's a dot in the sky and maybe it might do something, but I don't, I, I can't watch a video for 20 minutes waiting for something to move. So that's a tip. Everybody out there, send me a video when you capture an orb. And if it does something spectacular, then send it to me. If it doesn't move and doesn't do anything, then it could be a star. But you're, Explain to me, it could never be a star, and sometimes you just no. not have the camera ready to rock. This was, this was as clear as day. It was just right yeah. above my tree line. That's how close it was, and and you could see, as I said, it's a sphere, a sphere, but you could see the a smaller circle behind it, almost like a pulsion system. And that, and that just blew me away. That sounds like, and you I can't almost... explain that. It almost reminds me of a see-through, uh, an octopus, a man, uh, these octopuses down <laughs> deep below. They morph out, and they're, you can almost see through them. They're like, they live three to five miles deep. You know, I'm not an expert on biology, and oceanography, but there's some incredible life forms out there. And they could be organic, and 
they, these things could be actually living. That's that's the big question. You know what? Hey, thanks for calling in third phase of Moon. And uh, pleasure. Keep your eyes on the skies. Have your camera. Uh, keep in touch. Yeah, right? yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Nice. Keep it away from the from the water. Thanks. <laughs> there you go. There's uh, more callers into third phase of Moon. We got a few more minutes, and I see that we have uh, F1 on, and I know F1's watching Third Phase of Moon all the time. And I wanted to get his quick opinion of uh, Jack. Jack Jack is back from the ranch with some incredible new video. Did you get to see the new uh, video that Jack captured? Um, no, I didn't. I've been really feeling uh, kind of weird ever since when I told you. It's, I've been flat out on my back. And so and I did take a picture of one of the Blackhawks that came by again the other day. And this time I actually was able to, yep, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. But I actually, you know, I stood there and I was just, as soon as he opened up the door again, I ran in the house and grabbed my phone. And um, as soon as I ran back out, they had, like, saw already what I had in my hand and immediately just hit, headed for the ocean, which is not too far away from my house. And uh, this time I got a picture of him. And then, there, what happened afterwards? Where you did you post it on multimedia in the media? Nope. The social media. Nope. nope. I got it just. I got it just for you, brother. <laughs> nice. Well, send it over. I want to see that <laughs> bad boy. And yeah. when we come up to your location, we're going to be visiting with you. So no people, problem. No, we're going to shoot this. We're going to shoot it and show the public what's going down. See what F1 yeah, looks like, maybe, maybe. F1 still wants to, maybe, want to remain much in the Pretty much else knows what I look like, obvious. The military obviously do. Yeah, so what do you got to hide, right? It's no big yeah, deal. If I, I want to yeah. show them a big, fat, rigid one. That's what I want to show them. <laughs> we got to get the white. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just done with them, man. I'm done with it. You know, those guys can just. You know, man, do what you got to do, but it's they can't stop what's in, in progress right now. Hey, F1, you want to do something fun? What's that? Take the next phone call. It's an area code sure. 304. You want to take it? Not a problem. Okay, so here's area code 304. You're on, F1. Go for it. 304. What's your name? Uh, this is Christian. I called earlier. All right. Uh, Thanks for calling back. I wanted to add to um, where he he was requesting movement in the videos. Right. And the one of the two videos I added, one of the sp- the white spheres completely arches over the moon, and you can see it crest over the moon. And once my camera um, clips the moon where you can't see it anymore, it's clear as day that this is a UFO. And I just wanted to add back to my, um, when I first started researching what I'd been seeing in high school, and this has been happening for years, I found out that in 1952, um, a small town that I lived near in West Virginia had a, um, a massive sighting, and they called it the Flaming Arrow, because the entire town had witnessed this, and it had just appeared as if it was this massive arrow scorching through the sky. And yeah, let me add something with you. I just got to tell you that, you know, I'm part of my research, and sure enough, um, I checked back at a lot of the places I used to live, and it's amazing. There seems to be a trail of uh, occurrences, so I would encourage uh, you to do that. I tend to see a lot of this um, royal area. I don't know if the military or UFOs or whatever presumes that there's less of a chance people will think there's substance to this story because these are farmers and, you know, I live in West Virginia. There's a a very big stigma about people that live here, you know, they're dumb or whatever. And I don't know. A lot of people that live in farming areas have schedules to where they go to bed very early at night and wake up very early in the morning and most of the time, they're too damn tired to do anything but eat and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's also true. Their lives are on a much bigger schedule. They can't really even have the time to look up. Right, they're not the kind of guys that are watching TV and posting videos all day. they got serious stuff to do. Yeah. 
you know. So um, yeah, that's that's a that's a, an occurrence. But I would also encourage you um, once you I find with most experiencers and most people that see things, it's not just because you're looking up. It's because you've been experiencing this your whole life. So what you might want to do is. Just use your uh, use the great power of the internet and look up some of the places that you used to live, and uh, coordinate I've lived family here my whole life. Why I've I've just okay. kind of wanted to see if there had been something ever around here because I mean, but this this is the the entire town in this story, and it was re- it was re- it was just it was almost by fate this story was brought to me because I'd told a friend he had it heard. Is. Yeah, he had heard the news of many of my friends. We had the first witness I ever saw was was about nine of my friends, and it petrified us to where we we bolted in their basement, and then we just stared at each other in awe of like, what the hell did we just see? And my one friend that wasn't in that group with us, we had told him about this. Well, he's the one that had brought this um, flaming arrow story to me, and was like. You know what you describe happened in 1952, and the entire town saw this. Like, so he wasn't part of the group then, but he sure is now. <laughs> yeah, he 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 was totally sold. Yeah, I, I think he just didn't, he was in disbelief, and then once he this story had came across, it he was like, oh my god. And I have many right. friends that have they're in total disbelief. They think you're a nut. And then they come out and they're here three or four hours at a bonfire, and then they're looking up in the sky, going, "What's that?" And I tell them, "I don't know." And it's flying. That's a UFO. You know, <laughs> doesn't have flashing lights. Every plane I've ever witnessed. That's the the the, the biggest problem with people that say, "Oh, that's a plane." I can go out in my yard and see fifteen planes in an hour. Each one has a regulation flashing some mechanism of, like, to deter or show that they're a plane. Every orb I've ever witnessed has no strobe. They're just this pure ball of energy. You know, this is a, this is third phase of moon at its best, getting the word out, getting the public to speak, getting the public to collaborate with each other and talk back. Ask questions. Ask the big questions. That's freedom of information. We got it. We got that now. We got to use that. Because if that ever gets taken away, then there's nothing. In this field of finding out what's going on with this phenomenon, I know we're not alone. People need to know that we are not alone to get it mainstream, get this free energy out to the people. You know, this has got to be done now. Because if it isn't, our time might be running out where freedom of speech, what we're doing now, it can be changed. It could be changed quite quickly. And that's not where I want to go. I want to keep it the way it is, but move on on a faster level. we got to pick things up. we got to pick things up real fast, everybody. I mean, real fast. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to be back next week, Friday, the same time as usual. Same number at our new studio, so that's going to be quite amazing. Everybody stay tuned to Third Phase on our YouTube channel in regards to what happens to the public and what they shoot. Wow, that was Jack that called in. He shared incredible video tonight. You all saw it. You're all seeing it right now. Incredible callers. Chalice helped out. Uh, wow, it was just a lady that had her ankles and her jaw broken by an unknown entity? How do you explain this stuff? Fighter jets in pursuit of unknown objects. Origin unknowns. You know what, everybody, keep your eyes on this, guys. We are not alone. And if you've captured anything amazing, submit it to Third Phase of Moon. This is Blake Cousins, and I'm always standing by. Everybody, have a great day.